guys, this is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I want to show you how to make raw milk heaper. We are a little bit obsessed with fermented foods around here. We really just can't get enough of them. Whenever I go pick up produce from a local farmer or get produce at the grocery store or get raw milk from the lady who get it from locally, I always think, hmm, what can I ferment with this thing? And at any time, you will find anywhere between one and ten jars of something fermenting on my counter. It's, I'm always fermenting something. It's never nothing. And sometimes it can be as many as 10, so I'm a little bit excessive with it sometimes, but it is so healthy for us. It's just so good, so delicious. Once you get more used to the sour taste that fermented foods have, it is absolutely delicious. It's my favorite thing. And it is so good for your gut health, just unbelievably good for it. I've made water keeper in the past, and I will link that blog post and YouTube video down below but we always just come back to Milk Keeper. We just really enjoy it. I actually prefer it more than Water Keeper. I don't know why, it's just, it's just good. I just like it. I wanted to mention also that I will link the blog post that goes along with this video that has the printable recipe card for this exact recipe. It goes a lot more into detail about benefits of fermented foods. It has all the instructions. It has a printable recipe card. It has a frequently asked questions section and then also some expert tips. So probiotic foods help rebuild and maintain your health. And it also helps your gut process sugars easier. In fact, whenever I go to, whenever we go to someone's house, we end up eating something that we maybe won't normally eat at home, something that's unhealthy, maybe more sugar than we would normally eat, more processed refined sugar, just anything that we wouldn't eat in our normal, really healthy lives here. I will, as soon as we go home, I will drink some kefir or kombucha or eat some sauerkraut and I actually find that my body has a lot easier time digesting all the sugars and stuff that I've eaten if I eat probiotic foods afterwards. It kind of like helps my gut like break it down or digest it easier. I don't know what it is, but I actually find that it makes a difference if I do that. So many things in our modern American diet destroy the gut lining and the, the living organisms that inhabit a healthy digestive tract, otherwise known as the gut flora. Especially antibiotics, which are actually becoming more and more widely used. They do have their place, but I feel like the medical system has started using them a lot more than actually necessary, and it has really, really destroyed gut health for a lot of people, which is really sad because gut health is like, plays a huge role in your overall health. It's like crazy how much it does. It's like you would not even expect that it can affect some of the things that it does affect. You would be shocked at all the health conditions, including cancer, that can be contributed to by an unhealthy gut. With the typical American diet of non-organic meat, refined processed sugars, and genetically modified grains, and a whole host of other things that have been genetically modified and have had natural flavorings added in and Fred dye number 40 and like all of these things, it's not surprising that American people are very unhealthy as a whole. And so many of those issues can be traced back to an unhealthy no. gut flora. This means that it is really vitally important to bring back all of these fermented foods that are just absolutely packed with probiotics that will heal your gut. So here we go. We are going to get some fermented food in your life because it's healthy for you. So I'm gonna teach you today how to make raw milk kefir. So not only is kefir a great thing to add into your diet, it is also insanely easy. So this is a fabulous fermentation recipe for beginners to start with. There's almost no way you can ruin this. It's like just amazing. It doesn't grow mold like some other ferments do. A lot of vegetables that you ferment can grow mold on top if you don't properly submerge the vegetables below the liquid, but this actually doesn't do that. The only thing that might happen is it gets really, really, really sour and you might not be able to drink it because it's a little overwhelming, but really, it's really hard to mess up. So let's get right into this recipe. So what you'll need are some healthy active kefir grains. You can usually find them from someone locally. You can look on the Weston A. Price Foundation. You can find your local chapter and see if there's any other people around locally that are doing kefir. Kefir grains keep producing and multiplying. So if someone is doing kefir, most likely they will have kefir grains to give you. You can also get dehydrated kefir grains from somewhere like Azure Standard. I will be sure to link where you can get those from Azure because it's a really good option if you don't have anyone locally that has some for you. You need a quart of raw milk. Now, of course, you can use straw milk for this, but since raw milk has all of the healthy, beneficial bacteria in it still, it hasn't been killed off, the end result is going to be a lot healthier than it would be with store milk. So I highly recommend looking to raw milk, doing this with raw milk, but of course, if you don't have access to it or you can't afford it, I highly recommend always fermenting milk from the store and not ever drinking it straight. If you ferment it, it's introducing at least some beneficial bacteria back into the milk 
rather than just drinking dead milk from the store. And then you'll need a quart mason jar. You'll also need a cloth or a cheesecloth or something to cover the mason jar. And then you'll also need something to secure the cloth down. Something like a rubber band or a hair tie or a mason jar rim. So the first step is to put around two teaspoons of keeper grains inside your quart jar. Now I find that the amount isn't super important because I can go with, I can use as little as a half a teaspoon and I just might have to let it ferment a little longer. And I also can use like several tablespoons and it just will work ferment faster. So just keep an eye on your ferment and see when it's getting to your liking. But approximately two to three teaspoons is what you're going to want for a quart of milk. So what I basically do is I take whatever I had from the last batch and I put it in the new batch. And kefir grains do reproduce, they multiply, so I will keep getting more and more. But I actually sell these in my online shop. I will link that down below if you're interested in getting some from me. But when someone buys some, I take some out of my kefir grains that I've been fermenting every day and then I'll have a little less. So I find that selling them or giving them to friends is a great way to manage how many kefir grains I have and not get too many. Make sure you don't throw them away. Either try to sell them or give them to friends or eat them. They make the most delicious sour gummies. Like, I don't know what it is, but I enjoy eating them. Like, I'm always so excited when I have enough. They have it sold in my shop, but there's enough for me to eat a couple. It's just like so exciting. I don't know what it is. I'm just like a little child about kefir gummies. <laughs> Step two is once your kefir grains are in the jar, you're going to pour your raw milk over it, leaving like two inches of space in the top. So two inches of headspace because ferments can expand. You want to make sure you don't get it all the way up to the brim and have it being over have it overflowing when it's sitting on your counter or in your cabinet because that would not be very fun to clean up. Next you're going to cover the mason jar with cheesecloth or some other breathable type of fabric. Or you can even just set a mason jar lid on top of it. Not the rim, just the lid. You want it to be able to breathe and get oxygen, but not have bugs or dirt falling in it. If you're using cloth, I secure mine down with a hair tie usually, but you can also use a rubber band or a mason jar rim. And you're just gonna let it sit out on the counter until it's reached the thickness and sourness that you like. You can do as low as, low as a 12 hour ferment and it'll be a little bit more thin and runny and not sour, which if you're just getting used to it, might be a good idea to start with a little less just to get acclimated to the taste a little slower. I personally leave mine out for more like 36 Sometimes a little less, more like 24 hours, but I'm trying to get all the really good probiotic benefits and having it be more fermented is just gonna give me more bang for my buck. Plus, I really don't mind the sour taste. I've drank this for years now and I'm really, really used to it. Once it's fermented as long as you want it to, we're gonna strain the grains out. So I use a plastic strainer and a plastic spatula. You can also use a wooden spoon. You just want to avoid metals, especially reactive metals, because kefir grains are acidic in nature. So they, when they come in contact with metals like that they will react badly sometimes so i avoid metals whenever i can i just keep kind of pushing the spatula against the bottom of the strainer as i stir it so that eventually all the nice thick kefir will go through and you'll be left with all of your grains i pour the fermented kefir that's all finished it's in my bowl back into the jar that it came from and that's what i drink it out of and then i get a nice new clean mason jar and i put my kefir grains in it and i start the process all over again you repeat those same exact steps that we just did, super, super easy. Now there are several ways you can enjoy your fermented kefir now. Personally, I like to just drink it straight because I really love the sour taste and the thickness. And I just, it's one of my favorite breakfasts. I just will drink a quart of kefir for breakfast. Maybe have some eggs along the side if I am feeling a little more hungry than that, but it's a fabulous way to start off your day with some good probiotics in your tummy. You can add in some raw honey or maple syrup if you are not really liking the sour taste until you get used to it. You can add in as much as you need and then slowly even yourself off. I have a lot of helpers for this video as you can see. You can also make this into a smoothie. You can add some frozen fruit like bananas or blueberries or strawberries, like any kind of fruit that you like. Add some frozen fruit and the kefir and maybe with some honey and maple syrup in a blender and whip it up and that is super delicious and a great option for people who are also getting used to the taste. You can also eat it with granola. You know how yummy it is when you have yogurt and you put granola on it and maybe even some fresh fruit. It is my favorite. <laughs> I love it so much. But you can do the same thing with kefir. And that is all. It's just super easy, super simple. It's a process that takes like five minutes more like one or two minutes actually now that i think about it but it's this like two minute process that you have to do once every 12 to 48 hours so it's just like so easy and excellent ferment for beginners to start off with and even though i've gotten a little bit more experience with fermenting now this is still one of my go-to's this and kombucha are the ferments that i make all the time the ones that i make the most so if you guys are interested in more fermentation recipes 
I will link all of the fermentation blog posts I have on my website and the videos that I have on my YouTube channel. And make sure you go check out that blog post because it will have a really great in-depth frequently asked questions section. But thank you for watching this video and I hope it was helpful, but I will see you in the next one. Bye.